This one is for this weekend's UFC main event between Brian Ortega and Yaya Rodriguez. Surprisingly, there's a, a height and reach advantage in this one for Rodriguez. For whatever reason, I imagine them to be around the same height, but uh, 5'8 for Ortega and 5'11 for Rodriguez, as well as Yaya having a two inch uh, reach advantage, which of course he will make the most of. Um, 15 and 2 for Ortega with one no contest, 14 and 3 for Rodriguez with one no contest. Very, very similar in a lot of ways. Three TKOs for Ortega, four for Rodriguez, three subs for Rodriguez, but all before the UFC, although he did have a triangle on the Ultimate Fighter, if I remember right. Of course, Ortega, you know, three TKOs, good boxing, good elbows at close range, especially in more recent fights. Uh, seven submissions, two guillotines, a rear naked choke, and four triangles. Yaya impressed me against Max Holloway, especially because Max was coming off that fight over Calvin Cater, which he looked sensational. And then he fought Yair, who was very, very quick and, you know, very skilled, got a really, really diverse strike in Arsenal, you know, really quick legs, very supple, very flexible, spinning attacks, you know, switching stances, just a very exciting fighter to watch, as well as a lot, you know, dynamic movements, you know, flying knees and switch head kicks and stuff. He does fight with a lot of emotion, though. I think he kept his composure well in the Max Holloway fight. But then, of course, the techniques that he uses by comparison to Max, who's a lot more efficient, um, than, you know, jumping and flying with kicks and stuff. The style of Rodriguez has got its limitations over five rounds. Someone like Brian Ortega, who's got good defense, he's got good boxing, I expect him to try and pressure Rodriguez in this fight. If he's on the outside and Rodriguez is smart, he's going he's gonna to Adesanya him. He's going to stay on the outside, he's going to kick him to bits, and he's not really going to engage too much in the boxing range. Well, something else that's consistent with Ortega is that he, even in three-round fights, he's lost the first two rounds. Moicano, uh, Moicano beat him the first two rounds. He got caught in a guillotine in the in the in the third. Clay Guida was all over him for ten minutes, and then he he, he managed to to roll Clay Guida onto a knee in the third round. What was the other one? Was it Tiago Tavares? Ortega is is three four five. You know he started off really well against Korean Zombie. He's boxing his you know his footwork looked great in that, but characteristically, I mean you know so he's got four first round finishes one second round finish and four third round finishes and most of his first round finishes come from before the UFC so he's, he's he's waiting to the third round to catch people so as long as he doesn't take too much damage in the first and second round like he did against Volkanovski although he was close with that guillotine and with the triangle if he doesn't take too much damage he's a, he's a real submission threat in the last three rounds especially you know against Max of course he just got he got beaten up and his ability to, to to turn the fight around just diminishes the more damage he takes. And that could quite easily be possible with Rodriguez. It's not going to be, you know, 150 strikes around. It might be, you know, 60 or 70 strikes, but 10 of them might be head kicks or, you know, back, spinning back kicks to the body or whatever. They might be more damaging than, than five or six of Max Holloway's punches. So that's something else you've got to consider. He might get really hurt in this fight and then he, he might have to recover from that. Strikes land up per minute, slightly higher for Rodriguez, slightly higher striking accuracy and striking defence. Takedown defence is higher for Rodriguez, but of course Ortega is usually going to jump on the neck anyway, so he's not really bothered about actually defending the takedowns. Takedown accuracy is not great for either of them. Uh, at takedowns per 15 minutes and we have seen Rodriguez work takedowns uh, in his recent fight we have seen him work on the ground I just don't think it would be a smart move because you know even Ortega uh, against um, Thiago Tavares when he was in the bottom position he was able to to push and build frames and then drop him onto elbows and we've seen Rodriguez get blooded you know, we've seen him get hurt and damaged we've seen Ortega get hurt and damaged this might be a bit of a bloodbath this one it's going to be a great fight though it's an intriguing one because I feel like the technical abilities are going to shine on the night. But I also feel like like the one that keeps his head together is going to do better. And for me, I'm automatically inclined to Brian Ortega because he always looks like he's waiting for the bus. He never looks like he's in a fist fight. Whereas Rodriguez looks like he's going to war in his life or death every time. As much as we love that passion, the emotion can work against him, especially with someone as slick as Ortega. And I'm glad this is over five rounds, let me say that, because I think that we might need the five rounds to separate them. Great fight. Enjoy it. I'll see you next time.